Your reasons for listening to this show, well, those are your own. But just keep in mind that the views, information, or opinions expressed on the Tuttle Daily Podcast are solely those of the individuals involved and do not necessarily represent those of our sponsors. Yeah, it's called free speech, people. Nobody's forcing you to listen. Get ready for your daily dose of Tuttle. Uh, the all-time greatest uh, intern slash producer we've ever had, of course, Tuttle. Tuttle in Florida. From the Hobo Fish Camp, it's the Tuttle Daily Podcast. No wonder nobody likes you, Tuttle. Everything's a goddamn debate. Greetings and welcome to another edition of the Tuttle Daily Podcast. Hope you guys have been enjoying your day so far. Make sure you go to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Tuttle. Uh, If you haven't already done it, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell button. Uh, Because when you hit that bell button, it's going to alert you to any time I go live or upload any brand new content. I'll be going live again tonight at 8 p.m. Just to repeat, the 11 a.m. Tuttle Daily Podcast, 11 a.m. edition is uh, gone bye-bye. I have now talked to uh, Charlie Alamo, and we've got some things in the works. I've also found out that my uh, podcasting hosting service is now partnered with Facebook. So I really do think that things might be happening just at the right time. I I really, really, really do think that things might be popping off. And I know uh, a man that's about to turn 42 saying popping off is very, very douchey. But anyway. Uh, If you guys want to get a hold of me, there's a couple of ways you can do that. You can email me, Tuttle at gmail.com. That's Tuttle with two Ds, T-U-D-D-L-E at gmail.com. Or you can leave me a voicemail, 407-270-3044. Once again, that is 407-270-3044. So I don't even know where to begin. Like, there's so much stuff that I I, I had a, a... Have any of you guys ever had one of those days where you're like, man, I got a lot accomplished. I really, really have gotten a lot uh, accomplished. And I know that a lot of you guys probably think I'm I'm a narc or whatever. I got into not I wouldn't even say it's an argument because I I like this guy. This this guy has been listening to me since I started uh, at Real Radio 104.1 with the Monsters in the Morning. And he lives here at the Hobo Fish Camp. And I, all right, so I need to st- take a step back, okay? So I want to talk about the sheriff of Volusia County. The sheriff of Volusia County, we've had some very, very good sheriffs. We had Vogel. I remember Vogel. My dad used to talk about uh, Vogel all the time. And then uh, uh, Sheriff Ben Johnson, who was the previous sheriff. And he's a really good, he's married to Leslie Gale. Man, dude must have a big-ass hog, uh, if you know what I'm talking about. Because I'm not saying anything bad about Ben Johnson. Ben Johnson is a manly-ass dude, but, I mean, Ben Johnson uh, went to school, I think graduated a year before my mom did. And he was able to land Leslie F. and Gale from Local 6, WKMG. So I would have retired too. Like if I would have hooked up with Leslie Gale and I would just, I would have been like, ah, oh, you know what? I'm out. I'm out 5,000. Once again, another thing that a person that's about to turn 42 shouldn't say, but uh, chief uh, or sheriff Mike Chitwood, because he was the uh, Daytona P Daytona beach, Daytona beach, the beach, Daytona beach, uh, chief police officer. Um, is now the sheriff, and I've done a lot of stuff with him. I remember the first time that I worked with him was uh, doing kicks for guns for Real Radio one hundred four point one, and I really do think he is one of the best sheriffs that Volusia County has ever had. Hell, I'll even go as far to say that I think he might be the best sheriff that Florida has ever had. And I know a lot of people are like, oh, what about Grady? Grady. No, I'm telling you, uh, uh, Mike Chitwood is the goddamn man. 
because I emailed him about the boaters going up and down the the uh, the intercoastal here, uh, the Mosquito Lagoon just hauling ass. If you go to my Twitter account, if you just go to the media section or my Facebook, you'll be able to see the guy had three, I think, 100 horsepower engines and just was full Talladega matted right down the river. And I know a lot of people are probably like, oh, Tuttle, you shouldn't be a narc. You shouldn't be this. Like, I, I, I just sent the video to them and I was like, uh, you know, Sheriff Chitwood, you know, like, this is a nice area. You know, there's a lot of people that are fishing in the canal. Uh, not not in the, the canal area where boats are supposed to be moving, but when you're going that fast, you do create a wake. Not to mention that there's a bunch of boat slips down at the end of the Hobo Fish Camp. So when somebody comes hauling ass through here at 100 miles an hour, creating a big-ass wake, it's, it damages the boat. Not to mention there's a public boat ramp. And the last thing that people want while they're trying to unload or load their boats is somebody to come by and just be just being a dick, rooster tailing it right by the boat ramp. Not to mention the manatees. You know, the Florida manatee is about to be put back on the endangered species list. And this is where the argument, the disagreement that I got into with my friend that lives here at the Hobo Fish Camp. He was like, oh, uh, well, the Florida manatee is not native to Florida. The Spaniards brought it over here. And I'm like, huh? What? Did I, did I just hear you say that the manatee is not native to the state of Florida? And I'm not one of those people that just goes to Wikipedia and believe, because anybody can put anything on Wikipedia. I Googled stuff. I, I did everything that I could. And it says that the manatee is native to Florida, Georgia, Alabama, and has been found as far north as uh, Massachusetts. And, and the first thing when I heard it was like the, the Spaniards brought over the manatees. I was like, okay, explain to me how they got a manatee from Spain all the way across the Atlantic Ocean, because uh, not to mention manatees are mammals. They can't drink salt water. So you're telling me manatees swam all the way from Spain to Florida. Not happening. It's just not happening. And number two, tell me how they would have gotten a manatee, uh, even if they loaded them up on the boat. There's no, it's just not happening. And a lot of people I know do hate the manatees, but do you realize without the manatees, you would not even be able to travel up and down the St. John's River here in Florida because the grass, uh, the high sands, uh, would all overgrow the, the waterways. You wouldn't even be able to get your boat through some of those areas if it wasn't for the Florida manatees. But back to what I was saying is uh, I emailed uh, Sheriff Mike Chitwood. He said, listen, Patrick, Tuttle, we're, we're going to get some resources out there. And you know what happened? The very next day, the captain of the Volusia County Sheriff Marines Patrol contacted me to find out what area this was. He definitely said that the boat that I did the video of was going way too fast. That It's definitely a no-wake zone. He was also talking about how in this Oak Hill area, which I've talked about. Why do you think I call it the Hobo Fish Camp? I've talked about this. Uh, they said they get the, the thefts on the water. People just on boats in the middle of the night, rolling up, uh, uh, stealing people's boat motors. Uh, I've talked about this many, many times. I know it's only like nine, ten bucks. But when I'm having to do it every other week, I mean, that, that stuff adds up of these a-holes coming through here and cutting off my bait bucket. Like, they don't even bother to untie the rope. They just pull out their pocket knives, cut the rope, take the bait bucket, and they haul ass. So, the I think it was Captain Fenton 
He is the leader of the Marine Patrol, and he said they're going to start patrolling this area a little bit more. You know what? I probably shouldn't even be saying that because I want them to be able to catch a lot of these a-holes that are coming through here. And don't give me that whole Florida manatee thing. Grew the manatees. They're not important. Uh, do you realize that all the species uh, on, on, on the face of the planet Earth, you, you take one of those out, it's going to ruin the entire ecosystem or, or at least hurt a little bit. You get rid of the human beings, guess what? The earth gets better. The earth heals itself. The earth takes back itself. We are nothing but parasites on this earth. Like, we are just draining its resources. We're, we're, we're dumping oil into the ocean. We did it, we did it here in the Gulf of Mexico. We're, now we, we're doing it over on the uh, west coast of California. So, yeah, I'm not one of those, like, uh, tree huggers, PETA type people, but, and I'm sure a lot of you people are going to think that I'm a narc, but I, I really don't give a damn. I, I really, really don't. You know, they want to sit out there and do speed traps for people that are driving their cars around and stuff. Why are they not out there doing speed traps for the boaters that are hauling ass? I see the Coast Guard uh, come up and down this river all the time but they never do anything they don't uh i do every once in a while see the florida wildlife commission the game wardens out here but not as much as they should be and you know what uh sheriff mike chitwood said you know what god damn it i'm gonna get you the resources out there you know a lot of these sheriff's departments they're they're not out there talking to the community they're not out there, you know, trying to help people out uh, the, 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 way, uh, the way that Sheriff Mike Chitwood and his whole uh, sheriff's office is running things. And I know a lot of you guys hate cops. I know a lot of you guys are probably like, Tuttle, why are you marking out to the cops? Look, I, I'm a gun owner. I got a lot of guns that my dad, like, uh, left to me. I am not a felon. I've had one misdemeanor in my whole life, so I get to own them. But guess what? I can't, I can't protect myself all the time. I, I try to do the best that I can, but you know what? God damn it. I, I would love it, you know, when, when you need a sheriff's officer that's going to show up and save your life, you know, you'll be like, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. But there was a lot of hate in 2020 when it came to law enforcement officers. So I just want to thank, uh, Captain Fenton, uh, it's kind of not Fentanyl, but Fenton, and as well as uh, Sheriff Mike Chitwood of Volusia County a Sheriff's Office for helping me out with that. Now, one of the other things I wanted to get into, um, I have noticed, like, I look, I'm, I'm about to turn 42. I've already mentioned that a couple of times today. But um, since my dad, my pops, passed away, I have been doing a lot more, like, older man stuff, like getting out, doing therapy, not therapy as in going and talking to somebody, but, like, just getting out and doing yard work therapy. I used to be one of those uh, younger guys that would be like, I just don't get it. I don't get why older people are out there doing uh lawn work and stuff but like as the older i've gotten like i'm starting to take pride in it like i want my space to look good and we got this tree a lot of you guys have seen this tree and a lot of the videos that i've done uh when it comes to youtube youtube.com slash channel make sure you subscribe and hit that uh like button and, or some, uh, the bell button, because when you hit that bell button, you're going to get alerted any time I go live. But back to the tree. You guys have all seen the tree that I'm talking about. This tree used to be way more fuller. We used to get a lot more shade. But after Hurricane Matthew, Hurricane Matthew, the salt water really put a number on it. So I've been watering it. I've been like pitting, I've been uh, fertilizing it, pitting plant food down. But what I did today was I wanted to build the bed around the base of the tree. 
And right here at the Hobo Fish Camp is that they dredged a lot of the material out of the river. And a lot of it's coquino shells. And if you don't know what coquino shells are, it's just it, it's it's kind of like a poor man's diamond where it's it's just a solid rock where just it's been compressed so much that it's become a just one solid piece of rock. So this tree is really, really big. So it was going to take a lot of coquino shell uh, rock to be able to make it. So I, I, uh, I did a big coquino shell rock scavenger hunt, went over to the park, went around the hobo fish camp. I found enough, got it built up. I'm wanting to make it a little bit higher so I can just add a lot more material because the soil here is not, um, not the greatest to be able to grow things in. And this is something that we did when I was younger. My dad had this big, humongous tractor tire. And I'm not just on like, um, you know what? I'm talking a front-end loader. Front-end loader type tire that he got off of a job site. And we put it underneath one of the trees. We would put all of our compost, uh, organic and biodegradable stuff. In this tire, I would my dad would make me go out there with the shovel every single day, uh, and 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 turn it and till the soil, and and we would use that to be able to plant stuff with, and and that's the thing that I've started to do here at the Hobo Fish Camp is starting the compost. I know that it makes me sound old. I know that it makes me sound like old oh, Tuttle man. Like you're never gonna find a woman if you're uh composting for a living but but it's 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 all about the process people it's all about you know i've been wanting to uh keep myself busy keep myself busy so i don't think about all the bad things that have been happening as of late and it really has been helping me out a lot it has so i made that bed today i've been composting for about two months now and I used all that compost. I filled in the bed. I'm probably going to go buy some more potting soil myself to cover over the top of that. Because I really do want this tree to take off again. And then I also got that other tree that I planted that was from my, me and my dad's nursery that we had when we lived in DeLeon Springs. You know, I was talking to my uh, good friend. Amy Senna, she is the, uh, she's the voiceover chick that does a lot of the stuff for me. And we, we, we talk every single day, but, um, you know, I was talking to her and, you know, I, I guess in the United Kingdom, they don't have the FFA and we had talked about this earlier, but she had remembered what the FFA was. It's the future farmers of America. And one of the clubs that I was in was the soil judging team. I was in I was in two I was in two judging teams on the FFA. I was a part of ornamental horticulture and I was on the soil judging team. We went all the way to state when it came to uh, because I don't think they have a national championship. Could you imagine that? You know they they got the college world series that they got the college football playoffs. They got March Madness. Hell, I even saw that they're running cornhole on um, ESPN sometimes. Could you imagine, like, all right, welcome, welcome to Ocala, Florida, for the 2021 National Soil Judging uh, uh, Tournament. And uh, first up, into the hole. Because what they do for you is that they... They dig this hole for you so you can see all the different layers of soil. And they'll be like, first up uh, to walk into the hole is uh, Patrick Fowler. He has had a great year when it comes to soil judging. He hasn't been off by much, but this is a really, really, really tough hole. And let's see what Patrick Fowler is going to do. So what you do is you, you, you walk into the hole that they've already pre-dug for you. You look at the layer. You look at the layers. You look at the top, top soil. Top soil is always going to be a little bit lighter because that's where all the vegetation has already pulled the nutrients out of. 
But then the darker and dark, deeper and deeper you get, the better it is. So then once you get down to a certain level, you want to take a little bit of that soil and you want to put it in your hand. Okay? And you want to get a ribbon out of it. And by ribbon is, like, you want to put it in your hand. You want to take your pointer finger and your thumb, okay? You want to take the, the dirt, the soil, and, and, and thread it through your pointer finger with your thumb. And you want to see how much the soil sticks to each other. You want to see how much it ribbons off. Because the more that it ribbons off, the more nutrients that are in the soil. Then, you know, living here in the state of Florida, I know this is all boring as hell, but, and, and, and I'll move along. But here in the state of Florida, you also want to look where the, the water table is. You know, you don't, you don't see a lot of basements in the state of Florida because of the, the high water table that we have here. So, so yeah, I was a part of the soil judging team and, and I had that project. So if you go to my social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, you will be able to see the project that I did today. I even went out, I weed eated, I got that uh, 40 to one mixture gasoline to be able to put in the weed eater. So yeah, I, I had a very, very busy day when it came to just home improvement stuff. And I would like to hear from you. Like, I love to hear from you guys. Talk about this all the time. I, I, I can't take phone calls. But I would like to hear from you and, and see what those little bitty things are in your life that you may think is uh, that's amazing hobbies. But, you know, in the back of your head, you're like, oh, man, a lot of people are going to be like, oh, wow, well, how old are you? Yeah. You're, you got one foot in the grave. I would like to hear from you. The, some of those, as you've gotten older, things that when you were younger, you were like, oh, man, I'd kick my own ass if I did that. I would love to hear from you. Uh, and is, is soul judging a uh, real nerdy thing? Should, is that something I should have admitted to my friend Amy Sinna? Uh, you can email me, Tuttle at gmail.com. That's Tuttle with two D's, T-U-D-D-L-E at gmail.com. Or you can leave me a voicemail, 407-270-3044. If you were watching my YouTube live stream last night at youtube.com slash Tuttle, make sure you sub subscribe and hit that bell button. Uh, during the middle of it, my show completely got hijacked. My show got hijacked by a cat. A cat started walking up meowing i had seen it earlier in the day but just came up stole the show everybody was loving the cat i told you that you know before my dad died uh, a couple of months before that my mom's cat that she had had for like 14 years ended up passing away never was able to find her and so this cat came over and i started feeding it hungry as hell like this cat just kept eating and eating, threw it, threw it a couple of pieces of turkey, threw it a, uh, a hot dog. Uh, I opened up a can of uh, albacore tuna or whatever, ate that whole thing. And uh, my the, the cat, if you go on my social media, the cat, like, I, I can tell that somebody had dumped off this cat. Because if you've ever messed with a feral cat, a feral cat, if you are able to even get your hands on it, it is going to F up your whole entire day. But this cat came, followed me inside the house because it's so nice. I, let, I, I believe in the front door open, let the breeze blow through. The damn cat ended up coming inside. Cat ended up jumping up on my lap and falling asleep. Like, so I guess now, like, I have adopted a cat now. Which, I'm not complaining. I mean, it's great to have a cat around the house, especially with it getting colder, uh, the, the rodents and stuff. They're going to they're gonna be on the move looking to get uh, in, in warm areas. So it would be nice to have a cat. But, yeah, I, I, I can't believe somebody would actually dump a cat off, though. Like, there are some complete assholes out there in the world. And, like, I mean, even if you were doing that, like, just take it to a vet or, or, or whatever. You know, people that just abandon their kids. And I'm not trying to abandon 
or I mean, compare kids to animals. No, but at the same time, as like uh, we have like we have programs and stuff for you to be able to take the cat to, like the Humane Society. Yeah, it probably most likely will. Now that I'm thinking about it, it might be the best thing. Or you to drop the cat off at some place. At least the cat might have a fighting chance. And if a cat is a, a been a house cat from its beginning, its birth, will its instincts come in? Like a dog, a domesticated dog, you yeah, a dog will go out and beg, but a dog doesn't know how to hunt. At least a cat. A cat can hunt though. But I'm telling you right now, if this bitch, this cat, um, it does end up staying. If I could get it in a carrier, I'm going to take it down. And somebody said on the thing to get it declawed. Nope. No. Nope. I think that is one of the meanest things you could ever do to a cat is to take away one of its uh, only defense systems. And, yeah, that, that's, that's definitely not happening. But I am going to go get it spayed, uh, get it checked up and all that stuff. But I want to thank everybody that donated money uh during my youtube live stream last night because it was really really cool because i am going to use that money like i right now i'm looking for the cat the cat mom did not want the cat to stay in the house last night just in case uh the cat the way the cat was eating my mom thought maybe the cat had kittens somewhere you know just because the way it was eating and eating and eating but no i don't i don't think so because i i don't think the cat would have like came in the house and sat on my lap if it had kittens. It would have been, like, too worried. It would have been like, oh, my God, I got to go get get to my cats. I got to get to my kittens. So we'll see how that goes. I'll keep you updated. But if you would like to see that video, go to my YouTube channel. Uh, it's uh, titled, the video is Just Search Tuttle, uh, Waffle House versus Denny's. Because that that's something I didn't even get into last night because the cat came in there. Uh, the Boston Red Sox versus the Braves uh, it could be coming up. I, I kind of got ahead of myself. Braves, man, I don't know how the hell they blew that game last night. They did come back twice. They did come back twice uh, at their place. So even that loss alone, uh, they're still in a pretty good spot. Now, they need to take at least one from Los Angeles, in my opinion, to have a real shot because I, I feel like um, I, I talked about this before. Baseball, a lot of people think because it's slow. No, it, it's it, it's definitely a game of momentum for sure. So, uh, but yeah, I, I I was trying to debate because like Waffle House is in Atlanta. I think Denny's is up from the Boston area. So I, I was just debating what is better. I said the Waffle House, definitely for sure. Because every employee at the Waffle House knows how to fight. Uh, people stay uh, in their lane. And they don't they don't really cause much issues at the Waffle House because they will definitely get dealt with by the employees. I, I could take a Denny's employee all day long and straight up fight versus fight. Waffle House employee would absolutely destroy a Denny's employee all day. And I'm not even getting to the food. You know, you can't watch people at Denny's cook your food at the Waffle House. That's why I like the Waffle House. I can see from my breakfast or lunch or dinner being made until it gets to my plate, smothered, covered, and, and chunked. So that is my vote. But uh, if you'd like to, uh, leave me a voicemail, 407-270-3044, or email me, Tuttle, at gmail.com. All right, so I got a couple of opinions on the last story that I want to talk about. Uh, do you remember the last Seinfeld episode, how they all went to jail? For not helping somebody, I guess it was like a good citizen law, or you're you're supposed to help somebody if you see them in trouble. No, 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 no. See, I it, I don't know how I feel about this next story. Like I care about myself. I I, I care about myself. It's it, it's more about me caring, not caring about myself. It's about I have people that depend on me. I know a lot of you guys are out there. Your husbands are probably the main. Main bread earner. Sorry, I just burped a little bit of my breakfast. Uh, but uh, yeah, you you really can't go out there and put your life on the line. Somebody out in the ocean drowning, uh, strong rip currents. You know what? I'm I'm not going out there. Sorry, that's on you, buddy. Survival of the fittest. And I'm not trying to be a dick. I'm not trying to be a shock jock. But in this next story, 
I don't even know why. See, people didn't even call 911 on this. Some people, you know what? That That's also the, the other thing is that people want to become TikTok famous. Everybody wants to be uh, Instagram famous. Everybody wants to go viral. And I don't even know like where you would even be able to post this. But this woman, I think up in Pennsylvania, was getting raped on a subway train. And I could blame the people for not jumping in because you don't know if that, that dude's got a knife, that dude's got a gun, or whatever. Like, I don't know that woman, but I bet your ass I'll call 911. And also, that would not be happening. Well, it would happen, but not, not in the broad daylight where there are a lot of people because I guarantee you, if that happened in Florida, at least one person would have had a gun and that would have been a clean shoot all day long. A horrific crime and a man facing charges for allegedly raping a woman on a busy SEPTA subway train. Do we need the reporters to tell us, well, a horrific uh, case unfolded? Yeah, uh, r that's kind of what rape is. We, we don't need to be told that rape is horrific, you dumbass. Good evening, I'm John Timoney. Investigators applauding the woman for bravely coming forward about her attack, but they're also in shock that no one tried to help her. Our Seanette Wilson reports. Police are looking into whether video of the rape was posted on social media. Wow, I mean, nobody called 911, so they must have been using their phones for other things besides uh, trying to help this lady that was getting sexually raped. Uh, yeah, I like I said, I'm not jumping in. I don't know if that guy has a gun or a knife. Now, if I was in the state of Florida and I had my concealed carry on me, yeah, 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 I'm walking right up. I'm pitting, I'm pitting, I'm pitting two right into the side of his head. So I don't go through and through like I, it doesn't go through him and then on her. You got to go to the side. Uh, yeah, she might get some blood splatter on her, her on her or something. But uh, yeah, you can't shoot straight down because you might hit her as well. They do say the entire incident was captured on septic cameras. Police and some riders say they're surprised no one on the train called 911. This is 35 year old Fiston Noy. Back to what I'm saying. That that's kind of an ironic name with the last name of fisting, because there's going to be a lot of that going on, if you know what I'm saying, in jail, because, like I said, these inmates, they don't like rapists. They don't like child molesters and they they hate uh, 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 animal abusers as well, too. So, yeah, there's going to be a lot of fisting going on. The man police say raped and assaulted a woman on the market Frankfurt L. It happened Wednesday night around 10 o'clock. Now, and I don't even want to get on the train. <laughs> I'm I'm sorry, but that is a great drop. That is a great drop. Like, I'm always listening for stuff. And once again, this is a case of the news going out and getting the dumbest person or the weirdest sounding person that they could find for their news broadcast. Now, and I don't even want to get on the train. This woman, who doesn't want to be identified, is horrified after hearing what happened. I do ride the train and I ride it often, but now I think differently. I know that I should not make a, I, I bet you do ride a train uh, joke um, when it comes to a story about a sexual assault, but I'm going to. Yeah, bitch, I bet you do love the train. The train may not be something I'm going to ride now. Investigators say a SEPTA employee reported the incident to SEPTA police, saying something wasn't right with the woman on the L. They did not say where the employee was or what exactly she saw. Was it Bill Clinton just in the hospital? I know he got out, but didn't he have SEPTA? No, that's SEPTIS. Anyways, sorry, just a random thought. SEPTA then notified Upper Darby PD after the train pulled into 69th Street Terminal and SEPTA police had the suspect in custody. It's unfortunate that it happened and that it had to occur. Once again, do I need to know, like, if this is a horrific case or... Is anybody ever fortunate to get raped? I, I'm just saying. I, I don't. Want, I, I hate when people just use obvious, just words. To, yeah, it was unfortunate. Yes, it was unfortunate that nobody helped her. Uh, no, it, it's it's not like she's gonna be like, man, oh boy, whew, I was fortunate I got raped tonight on the train. Where no one actually stopped to take the time to help. Sadia Smith is talking about others who were on the train. In a statement, SEPTA police said those people witnessed the horrific act, which may have been stopped sooner if a writer had called 911. We talked to Steve Anderson outside the terminal today. We need more security. Upper Darby Police Superintendent Tim Bernhardt says the 30-year-old victim did not know her attacker. 
I spoke to her this afternoon. Unbelievably strong woman. Um, she she really is. I mean, she she came forward. She provided a lot of information, and um, you know, she she's she's on the mend. Hopefully, she she will get through this. Police say Noy is being held on $180,000 bail. They believe he is transient, possibly homeless. Reporting in Upper Darby, Seanette Wilson, Fox 29 News. Are we sure that this was a raping? Maybe she was eating like a ham or ham sandwich or something, and it was confused as being raped, and he was just trying to get her ham sandwich. If he's homeless, I'm sure he was hungry. I'm just, I, I look, you got to look at all angles, and I know that's a horrible joke. Anyways. I'm going to get out before I get myself in uh, in a deeper of a hole. Hope you guys enjoyed today's show. Hope you guys stay safe. Make sure you check out my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Tuttle. And make sure if you're in the market to buy or sell a home in the Brevard, Flagler, Volusia area, check out my buddy Ian Hanna at (laughs) ianhannahomes.com. And that's the show for today. Thanks for listening to the Tuttle Daily Podcast. Hey, don't be a dickhead. Do us a favor. Like, share, and subscribe to the show. Also, check out the Tuttle category at 315live.com. The Tuttle Daily Podcast is brought to you by Starfire Transport, stitchyouup.com, and pocketpairclub.com. Special thanks to show producer Vulture and co-host Ciroc. Show voiceover services brought to you by jcvoiceover.com and The Little Cheese Show. Download and subscribe to The Little Cheese Show everywhere podcasts are found. If you want to help support the show, go to paypal.me slash Tuttle on the radio. You have something you want to say? Tuttle at gmail.com or leave a voicemail at 407-270-3044. To follow all Tuttle's social media, go to Tuttle.net. That's Tuttle with two Ds dot net. Thanks again for all your support, and we'll see you tomorrow on the Tuttle Daily Podcast. I get ignorant in normal situations. What? What you mean? What the fuck you mean? What, what are you talking about? Nigga, what the fuck is you talking about? Oh, shit.